All right, welcome back to Autodesk Maya. In this tutorial, we're going to discover the time node in MASH objects. So we're going to do something very interesting here. I'm going to uh, create an animation here, and we're going to actually um, use the time to offset the animation and do some other interesting things, looping it and so forth. So I'm just adding a cube here in the center here, and I'm going to go to the channel box settings here, scroll down to polycube input, and I think I'm going to increase the height here. Just drag up on the slider here, maybe around to nine or so. Looks pretty good. And then um, I want to add some height divisions, so I'm just dragging a little slider here. Uh, maybe 12 is good. And then uh, I think one depth uh, division would be kind of cool. And then what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to select this edge. So I'm going to double click on this edge loop here. And what I want to do is I just want to bring it back. So I'm going to hit the W key and just kind of angle a little bit just so it has a different kind of look uh, it's kind of cool it has like a I don't know a little bit of vertebrae kind of quality to it um, and then I'm just gonna right click go back to object mode so I have modified this I'm actually gonna turn off grid so it's a little easier to see and I'm gonna turn on the uh, wireframe on shaded so when I deselect you can see it here and what I want to do is basically animate this using a deformer so Make sure in the animation set, or you can be in the rigging set, um, both of them have the deform area. So just go to deform, and basically you want to go down to nonlinear, and choose bend, and that will create the bend deformer here. If you hit number four, you can see it in your um, wireframe mode, you can see it here. And so I'm going to hit number five to go back to shaded solid, and I'm going to go down to the input, I have the bend handle selected, click on bend one, and here is the curvature option so basically as I drag this you can see I get this kind of effect where I curve and bend so I'm thinking um, I don't know 105 looks pretty good as a value here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a key for that frame on number one so I'm going to hit the S key and then I'm going to move to about frame 30 here and I want this to go the other direction so I'm just going to type in negative 105 and then hit the S key. So now if you look, we got a little bend, a little bend. So I'll go up to frame 60, and then just type in uh, 105, and then hit the S key. So we got a little loop uh, just till 60, frame 60. So if I hit play, you'll see the loop going on until there. And then there's nothing happening afterwards. So I've got uh, 200 frames here if I double click on this. So I have a lot more frames to to go through, I'm going to set it to maybe 150. So I, I have some more frames here, even though they're not visible yet. So we're going to see what happens with the time um, mash object, what we can do with this. We're going to be able to loop it and we're going to be able to offset the animation, which is going to be really exciting here. So in, in order to create a mash object, we can't select the handle, we have to select the cube. So I select the geometry that I have here. And then I'm going to go to uh, the FX icon here and go to Mesh and Create Mesh Network. Once I do that, I will have duplications of my Mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Attribute Editor and go into the Mesh Distribute. And we want it to be linear, that's fine, but what I want to do is offset it in a different direction. So the X isn't going to work because that's sort of the bend direction. Uh, what's the direction I want is the Z direction because I want them to offset as the animation loop. So I just basically increase this value however far I want. Looks like 20 would probably be good, maybe uh, 20 here. And I'm going to increase these maybe to 14. So maybe I'll increase a little bit more, maybe like 25, just to have a few more in here. It's kind of fun to look at this. So now if I uh, hit rewind and hit play, you'll see they're all being animated, which is pretty cool. So uh, let's do something fun with this. Let's add that. Uh, the time node in MASH. So I go back to the MASH1 object and here's the time node. So I'm going to click on it and click add time node. So what the time node will do is when I click on time one or I'm sorry MASH1 time if I scroll up here at the top you'll see here here's animation start and end. So if you remember I start at frame one then uh, to 30 and then to 60. So it ends at frame 60 basically. And You can see that when I select one of these objects here um, if I click on uh, the actual bend handle, you'll, there you go. You can see the frame 60 here is where it ends. So let's go back to MASH1 here, back to the time. 
So what we want to do is start the frame at frame 1, end at frame 60. And that would basically be the same, except now it would loop it. So if I rewind this, hit play, you'll see it'll be on a continuous loop. So it keeps going back and forth, back and forth, or it goes back to 30. It seems like 30 is popping out and not making it, which is weird. Oh, I noticed I, did, I didn't type in the right number. So I want to type in 60 and end. All right, so I realized I didn't have this fit to frame 60. I had it at frame 25. So as I hit play, you can see now we got a constant loop, even though I have 150 frames here. So let's do some more cool things here. So we have here, um, we can stagger the frames of this value here. So if I increase this value here and then hit play, what will happen is you'll see it'll start to stagger as I increase this value here. So I can set this to like 20 and hit play and you'll start to see a cool little staggering that happens there. It's got a cool little rhythm. I can check the random stagger and hit play and now they're randomly staggering along which is really exciting. Um, I can adjust the random seed which will create a little bit more random sort of variable um, in the staggering too. So lots of really cool things you can do with this time node. So let's see what else we can do. Um, so let's uncheck the random stagger uh, drop the stagger frames to zero so we're back to where we were you know we just have the constant loop and then uh, scroll down to the area here where it is um, the strength and fall off and what we're going to do is set this to animation frame here and in the fall off object if you open this up you have some settings here and if you collapse it what you can do is you can basically uh, right click in here and create, and you'll actually create a uh, an object. So I'm going to click create, and you'll see here in the scene here, I have created sort of this object here. And if I scale it up a little bit, I just hit the R key. This object has an influence on this animation. So as I scrub through, you'll see how cool this is. Uh, and it's done through a gradient uh, between these two parts, the inner part and the outer part here, which is pretty cool. So it basically allows me to animate this uh, which is very exciting. In fact if I want to change the distance of these objects I can go uh, I can select that object and go into the channel box uh, attribute editor let's see here and go to and in the falloff node here there's this inner zone which I can reduce so what that'll do is as I drag across you'll see it's got a, a little bit more uh, time to get that influence to happen as I reduce that amount for the two. So it's starting to happen and then we got another influence as it goes back there. If I increase this value it'll hit all at once pretty much and you can see the influence that happens there. So a uh, nice little separation there you can kind of play around with the adjusting of the fall off here. And there are different kinds of shapes. You could do a, sh a cube here which will have a little bit different influence. You can do uh, particles, you can do a mesh that you can input in here. So you'd have to input those on your own, but uh, typically I use the sphere or the cube to have the influence. And then what you do is you just set your keys and voila, you got this cool animation that you can stagger. So uh, enjoy the time node in MASH objects. Until next time, see you soon in Autodesk Maya.